Virtual Mindfields podcast. Today we're going to be talking about the seven-year Great Tribulation. Some Christians think that God's wrath will last seven years, but I'm going to show you that the seven-year Great Tribulation is broken in, in two stages. Stage number one is the first three and a half years, which is complete deception, and stage number two, which is the second three and a half years of the Great Tribulation, is God's wrath. Well, we're going to start by going to Matthew 24 and verse 21. For at that time there will be great tribulation unmatched from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be seen again. Verse 22. If those days had not been cut short, no one would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. So here, God, for, for those who are going to get saved during the great tribulation, he has mercy on them, and he's not going to send his wrath, his bombardments, according to the book of uh, Revelation, if you read it, all those things that are going to happen. He's not going to send it throughout the whole seven years. So he's going to cut it short to uh, the second half of the Great Tribulation. And I'm going to show you this. I'm going to show you in, um, in Daniel chapter 12. In Daniel chapter 12, we're going to start in verse 1. And this is what it says. At that time, Michael, the great prince who stands watch over your people, will rise up. There will be a time of distress, the likes of which would not have occurred from the beginning of nations until that time. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. So we see here, time is coming unparalleled to any other time, which we just read in Matthew 24, verse 22. Now, I'm going to start, I'm going to skip, and I'm going to read, I'm going to start in verse 5. Then I, Daniel, looked and saw two others standing there, one on this bank of the river and one on the opposite bank. One of them said to the man dressed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, How long until the fulfillment of these wonders? Now here, they're referring to the Great Tribulation, the time unparalleled, like in Daniel chapter 12, verse 1, that says, There will be a time of distress, the likes of which will not have occurred from the beginning of nations until that time. So that's referring to that because it's in the same chapter, so it's the same context. Now I'm going to read verse 7. And the man dressed in linen who was above the waters of the river raised his right hand and his left hand toward heaven. And I heard him swear by him who lives forever, saying, It will be for a time, that's one year, and times, that's two years, and half a time, that's half a year, when the power of the holy people has finally been shattered. All these things will be completed. So here we see that the unparalleled time that's going to come is going to be for three and a half years. You find this in Daniel 12, verses 1 and 7. Now I'm going to show you the first half of the Great Tribulation, which is the first three and a half years. So for that, we got to go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. So in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, starting in verse 9, it says, The coming of the lawless one, here the lawless one is a reference to the Antichrist, will be accompanied by the working of Satan with every kind of power, sign, and false wonder, and with every wicked deception directed against those who are perishing because they refuse the love of the truth that would have saved them. For this reason, God will send them a powerful delusion so that they believe the lie, in order that judgment may come upon all who have disbelieved the truth and delighted in wickedness. So as you can see here, the first thing that the Antichrist does, he comes into the world stage, and he deceives people. He's going to deceive the masses. Now, in the second part of the Great Tribulation, if you go uh, to verse 3 of Second Thessalonians 2, it shows you what happened at the second half of the Great Tribulation, which says, Let no one deceive you in any way, for it will not come unto the rebellion of curse, referring to the, uh, the apostasy, and the men of lawlessness, the son of destruction, is revealed. Look at verse 4. He will oppose and exalt himself above every so-called God or object of worship. So he will seat himself in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. So here you have the Antichrist in the second half of the Great Tribulation. He's going to go to the temple. He's going to stop the sacrifice and he's going to claim to be God, meaning he takes off his mask. No more deception. He's going to be, he's going to let it all out and show you who he's claiming to be, God himself, so that he will receive your worship, and according to Revelation 13, to receive his mark, which is a 666, or the name, 
or his name. Now, to see this, that he does it in the middle of, of the Great Tribulation, that he cuts it in the middle, for that we go to Daniel chapter 9. So we're going to go to Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, which says, And he will confirm a covenant with many for one week. Here, the word week is in reference to seven days, which is translated into seven years. So this is the seven-year Great Tribulation. But in the middle of the week, so in the in the beginning of the second half of the Great Tribulation, which is the second half of the three and a half years, he will put an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of the temple will come the abomination that causes desolation until the decreed destruction is poured out upon him. Meaning he's going to put the his idol, an image created in his honor on the temple. He's going to desecrate the temple. And that's when... We read in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4, that he goes inside the temple and claims to be God. And Jesus in Matthew 24, verse 15, warns the Jews at that time who are there in Jerusalem when this is happening, that when you see the, the abomination that causes desolation, meaning his image on the corner of the temple, run for your lives and hide in the wilderness because he's coming to kill everybody and to force everybody to receive the mark of the beast. Now, in Revelation 14... It gives you a strong warning that if you receive the mark of the beast, you cannot get saved. You forfeit salvation because you are rejecting Jesus Christ in favor of the Antichrist. So quickly to recap, the seven year is in two stages. The first seven years is the great deception, which we see that in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, and also starting from verse 9. is referring to he's going to come to deceive. Then the second part of the Great Tribulation, God pours down his wrath upon the earth. And at the same time, the Antichrist uh, stops the sacrifice of the third temple. He puts an idol of himself there and he takes out the mask to claim that he himself is God to get everybody to worship. Meaning it's going to be very chaotic. And just to let you know, if you go to Revelation chapter 6 verse 2, the Antichrist himself is the first seal that Jesus breaks and brings judgment. So the Antichrist, when he takes off his mask to claim to be God and forces everybody to get the mark of the beast, that is God's wrath. That is the beginning of God's wrath because the Antichrist is the first seal of Jesus Christ when he breaks the seal. He is the, the beginning of God's wrath. Thank you for listening.